Hello and welcome to the fifth episode of The Road to Net Zero, a new podcast from the Advanced Propulsion Center. My name is Clem Silverman and in this ongoing series looking at hydrogen in automotive, this week our correspondent David James is back out with another one of our projects led by Dolphin N2. This time they'll be looking at efficient combustion technology with the ability to run on green hydrogen. We hope you're enjoying this podcast so far and please subscribe for more in-depth interviews. For this interview, I travelled to Millbrook Proving Ground to meet Nick Owen, the technical director of Dolphin N2, to find out more about the development of their very efficient thermopower internal combustion engine that can run on diesel or hydrogen. Just tell us about the engine you've been developing. So it's called a recuperated split cycle engine. Uh, The idea is to have something that you can base on the same manufacturing techniques as a standard truck engine, but gain more efficiency and cleaner exhaust emissions. What we do, how we achieve that, is we take the four-stroke cycle that you have in a standard engine and we split it in two. So you have two cold strokes and two hot strokes happening in different places instead of happening in the same place. So the air is sucked in and compressed in a cold cylinder, It's then transferred into the hot cylinder where you burn it and expand it. And on its journey between the two, it passes through a thing called a recuperator. And that recuperator recycles wasted exhaust energy coming out of the engine and puts it back into the the thermodynamics of what's going on inside. And that's where the efficiency comes from. And by doing that, we can drive the efficiency right up. Uh, We can actually compete with fuel cells, which are conventionally thought of as being more efficient than internal combustion. And even just burning diesel, you save an awful lot of fuel. That makes a big impact to carbon budgets. But the best thing of all is that this engine is equally happy doing what I've described on other fuels like hydrogen, which is, of course, a zero emissions fuel. So just explain to to us, the layperson, about a diesel engine. So most of the truck miles, the off-road miles that are done in construction, etc., are using diesel. Diesel is a very energy dense fuel, but internal combustion engines aren't that efficient. Where's the energy go when we lose energy? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So a conventional diesel engine, as you say, diesel is a very energy dense fuel. You can carry an awful lot of it in the tank, but in a conventional engine, you will only get maybe 40, 45% of that out as usable power. The rest turns into heat, either goes out of the exhaust pipe, or thrown out through the radiator as, as heat. And that once, once it's turned into heat, you can't do much with it. You can keep the driver warm in the cab, but it produces far more than you need for just that purpose. So just talk about why is it more efficient to put that heat back into the engine? So fundamentally, an engine works by converting heat into power. That's what an internal combustion engine does. So if you put that heat back in, you've got more heat to turn into power through the expansion process. So just talk about the APC funding. What what was that for? What did it do? Back in 2020, we won a project called Rearmed, uh, which enabled us to do two things. Firstly, it enabled us to uh, address some specific issues around our base diesel engine, around some of the component technologies by working with suppliers. But secondly, and more importantly, it enabled us to develop a hydrogen version of that engine. And hydrogen is a really important step for us. What we were hoping to do was validate that you could use hydrogen as a fuel with the same high efficiency and low NOx emissions that we were seeing on diesel. And we were working with a local partner university at Brighton. We were able to do just that. So just talk about how that is is an exciting proposal for your technology? So hydrogen is very much seen as a future zero emission transport fuel. It is readily made from renewable energy. You can convert electricity to hydrogen quite effectively if that electricity is being produced by solar panels or a wind farm at a time when you don't want it as electricity. Quite a cost effective thing to do then is to turn that electricity into hydrogen when you don't want it and make a transport fuel. It emits nothing uh, but water when you burn it in air. And so there are no carbon emissions coming out of the exhaust pipe of the vehicle either. So it's a a very clean fuel. 
Now, one of the criticisms I've heard about hydrogen internal combustion is the NOx emissions. Yeah. Just explain what NOx is, why it's a problem, and how your solution gets around it. So NOx, oxides of nitrogen, are one of the major air quality pollutants. Uh, they also happen to, to contribute to the greenhouse effect, but the main problem with them is air quality. They're not good for breathing and lung disease, etc. Uh, so if you burn hydrogen in an engine in the wrong way, you can produce quite a lot of NOx. But actually, the hydrogen internal combustion engine has shown multiple times that if you do the right things, you produce very, very little. We're currently producing about a tenth of the NOx that a current truck engine produces, which means that even with today's after treatment devices, we can meet any emissions legislation proposed for the next 10 years anywhere in the world. If you put the very best after treatment technology on, you can actually produce an engine that cleans the air of NOx, i.e. what's in the exhaust is lower than what is in the ambient in a city. So, you know, that really is a step. And you have pretty much all of the impacts of an absolutely zero emitting vehicle. The levels really are so low. Just talk about a little bit about how the technology integrates with the business case, because what you're trying to do is build an engine that effectively you could either retrofit into an existing truck or new trucks. The supply chain doesn't need to change fundamentally, does it? Yeah, ab absolutely. So one of the big objectives with this technology is to use the existing supply chain as much as we can. You know, all over the world, we have people who know how to make engines, make parts for engines, service engines, and recondition them. So the more of that we can reuse, the more quickly we can achieve an environmental impact. So around 80% of the content of this engine is basically uses exactly the same processes that are used to make an engine today. Uh, there's a relatively small amount that is changed and new. Uh, and compared to a battery or a fuel cell, that's a big differentiator. The aim is that it is then easy to take up the engine as a new product. You could even retrofit one to an existing vehicle. Certainly the, the, the change from a diesel split cycle engine to a hydrogen one is, is, is one where you, you really could consider a retrofit because the internals are the same. Uh, what we're aiming to do is build an engine where you just have to change the fuel injectors and nothing else. So one of the things I understand is that construction and mining are two of, two of the biggest contributors to greenhouse gases and they use a lot of power. How important is it from, from a technical point of view, I know the business case is perhaps separate, that the businesses operating now can transition fairly smoothly? So they can start to put this technology on while the diesel fuel's available, give it another five, six years, the hydrogen comes in, it's a transition. So I, I know we're getting into business case, but there's a technical consideration in all of this, isn't there? Yeah, I think the important things for sectors for sectors like construction and mining, and you'd also put agriculture in, is, is that these are very hard working engines that operate in often quite remote and hostile environments, a lot of dust, uh, certainly a long way from infrastructure. These things need to be rugged and simple uh, and trustworthy. You know, to those businesses, downtime is disastrous. So, so something that is rugged and known is very attractive for them. So our business case is that operating on diesel, we can save all those sectors uh, a lot of fuel as we can with trucking, aiming to get a payback in less than a year. And that then when the time comes to switch to hydrogen, uh, you know, hydrogen is a fuel which, like a diesel, can be bought to the site in a tanker doesn't require wiring or any sort of infrastructure like that. The transition is much less painful. And transition is really, really important. It's speed of uptake uh, it, it is, is what will make the environmental impact. A technology that we can get adopted quickly is really, really going to make a big impact versus one that may be theoretically perfect, but is hard to adopt. Obviously, the battery electric cars are getting all the press. It's a very sexy thing. It's very media friendly. Just talk about the environmental, the carbon benefits of just keeping this technology with diesel, but trying to have an impact in those heavy sectors, transport, agriculture, mining, construction. If you were going to invest in something, what's going to give you the best return on your carbon dollars, for want of a better way of explaining it? 
Well, well, yeah, that, that, that's, that's a very, very important point that you make because simple fuel saving has become perhaps unfashionable compared to zero emissions vehicles. But we, we mustn't forget that there is an enormous amount of environmental benefit to, to simply use less fossil fuel while we're still using them. And, and recent world events, I think, shall we say, have, have accentuated that in that there's a security of energy supply issue in being able to use less fuel. So, so yeah, over the next 10 to 20 years, actually, the bigger impact comes from saving fuel on the existing fuels, which we are all still using, rather than the new fuels. The point here is that, is that those two factors aren't in competition with each other, with our technology. It is basically a very similar engine that is running on the new fuel. So you, you, you really can have both the short-term gain and the long-term solution. Have you got any numbers around that? Because, I mean, obviously you're working, you're part of Iveco now. What are their numbers they're looking at? They must be excited about the competitive advantage this delivers to their customers. So, I mean, essentially, we're looking at a technology that could save the operator up to 20% on their annual fuel bill. And that has a huge effect because commercial vehicles, unlike cars, you can spend the cost of the vehicle in fuel in a year if you're using it hard. So the benefit of making that saving is enormous in terms of the total cost of ownership. And that, that really is the business case for adopting a technology like this. And then when we transition to hydrogen, hydrogen will be an expensive fuel potentially initially, therefore using it economically will be the most attractive. And the more painless you can make that transition, the faster it'll happen. Now, I guess where battery electric vehicles might be the sexiest, for want of a better term, fuel cells are obviously gaining a lot of attention. But just to explain, this is more efficient than a fuel cell. So, OK, let me qualify that. A fuel cell at light load is very efficient. Fuel cell tends to be most efficient at about 25% of its full power output. And at that level, which tends to be where light duty vehicles, passenger cars, vans, urban delivery trucks operate, the fuel cell will be a lot more efficient than an internal combustion engine is. As you go up the load spectrum, however, the, the efficiencies converge. Even a conventional internal combustion engine running on hydrogen closes the gap a lot on a fuel cell because at high power, where these heavy duty commercial vehicles operate, the fuel cell's efficiency falls while the combustion engine's efficiency is still rising. What we can do is actually make the lines cross. So we cross over to be more efficient than the fuel cell at those very high powers. And I think that's important because there's always a, a kind of horses for courses thing going on with environmental solutions. And I don't actually say I compete with or I beat the fuel cell, I say I complement it because we both need the hydrogen and the more demand you can create, the more quickly the hydrogen infrastructure will build up. So fuel cells and hydrogen ICEs will go hand in hand and can really be best friends to each other, not, not deadly enemies. And I think that's a very, very important point. I, I guess one of the, the big criticisms around hydrogen has always been about the efficiency and therefore the cost of production and use. Have you got any points on that that are pertinent? Well, yes, but efficiency isn't the only measure that you should use, because if you're using renewable energy that is in surplus because the wind is blowing or the sun is shining and people don't want the energy, then the energy is virtually free. You can't give the, stu the stuff away. Therefore, efficiency in the conventional sense doesn't matter. It, 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 it's really about cost effective production. If the cost is right and it's coming from a sustainable source it doesn't matter how efficient that is or is not uh, but, but, you know because the source is free thank you for taking the time to listen to this interview to find out more about hydrogen transport and the work of the advanced propulsion center in supporting low carbon mobility visit abcuk.co.uk